What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of the Jacksonville Jaguars against the New Orleans Saints and really analyze what I think is one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. To me, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the real deal. You can see it from the quarterback to the offensive line, the run game, to some of the defensive linemen that we've seen on this defense. And what's crazy is they are 5-2 and two and people don't even give them the respect that they deserve. This is a top five team. The offense over the past three games is a top four offense over the course of the season is a top nine offense. And generally speaking, the explosive playmaking ability is there. So today we're going to analyze exactly what it is, starting with the first rep right here. If you guys look at the offensive line on this one, they do a really nice job keeping the quarterback clean. And it's not even just the offensive line that really sticks out to me. If you guys watch the left tackle here, he's going to do what is referred to as a snatch and trap move right there. On number 96, who's a really, really good edge player, has a lot of sacks this season, a lot of winning reps. And Cam Robinson does a really, really nice job just snatching him down. If you guys look at the right hand here, punch that hand down, basically remove the leverage that, that the defensive end has. And just like that, he's going to fall on the ground. But what's most impressive to me about this offensive line is that the rookie right tackle, Anton Harrison, basically shut down who I think a lot of people would agree is a top 10 defensive end in the NFL in Cameron Jordan. I'm very, very fired up for this film breakdown. Let's get right into it. Check this play out. You got a 15-yard screen towards the left of the screen here. I really want you guys to watch the right guard. Brandon Sheriff does a really, really nice job getting out in space and picking up Pete Werner, the inside linebacker of the Saints. He gets this guy out of there. To me, this is exactly what I want to watch from an offensive lineman. I love how they sell this, and none of the defensive linemen really realize or recognize that the screen is kind of coming. With that, you can see that the guard is going to get out in space. And he's going to do a really nice job making contact with Werner and really sealing him outwards, which ultimately gives the running back the lane to the inside. I mean, look at this. He absolutely displaces the inside linebacker here of the Saints. It's a really nice shot by a really, really good lineman, arguably a top five right guard in the NFL. So that's a really nice shot right there. And on this one, you picked up 15 yards. Let's get into the next snap. Check this play out. You got a 14 yard pass to Agnew, just a really, really nicely designed play. Now, I want to talk about these type of concepts because to me, this is where, as an offensive coordinator, you make your money. These type of play designs are the type of designs that keep a defense on its heels. And this is part of why I think the Jaguars are such an explosive offense. It's because of plays like this. Beautiful job here. Really nice design. And from the offensive line perspective, I mean, this is perfect. Because what's going to happen on this one, and we'll flip it here to the end zone angle here in a second. So what's going to happen on this play is the quarterback's going to take steps to the right as is the running back. And every single one of these offensive linemen are going to step towards the right of the screen. And what that's telling these defensive linemen is that the run is over here to the right side. That they are running a zone to that same side. But what's really happening is as these guys are stepping over here to the right and these defensive linemen are jumping the gap, these guys are just going to seal it off. You're going to see that with every single one of these guys. As the defense flows over here to the right, it's really just a bunch of seal-off blocks. And to me, this is exactly how these plays have to work, right? You got to make it look like this is some sort of zone run. And when in reality, it's not a zone run to the right. It's actually a, a end around towards the opposite side. And these are the type of plays that help win Super Bowls, right? Because these are those explosive plays that you would expect. And you're not running these five times a game, right? This is going to come up once this week it'll come up one time and three weeks from now and again these are winning plays right and never underestimate the fact that Jacksonville's gonna attack a guy who's not very quick right this is not Trayvon Walker who's fast enough to blow this play up if Jordan recognizes this play he's not fast enough to ultimately make the play and you guys see it on this one that he's basically not gonna be able to make the play like he sees this coming he's trying to change direction he's just not fast enough so never underestimate the fact that the offense is running this specifically towards that defensive end. So that's a really, really nice job. Let's get into the next snap. Check this play out here. You got a 19-yard pass to Christian Kirk. Just a really, really nice job reading by the quarterback. Uh, let's discuss this play because to me, this is such a nice read by the quarterback. Let's break this play down. So the first thing within this play is you got one safety deep, which means that this is either a cover one man-to-man -man defense or a cover three zone defense. And the offense is called what is called a Yankee concept, which is a deep post with the crosser. And when the defense is playing a cover one or a cover three, you want to try to get this crosser here. Now, keep in mind, this is a long developing play. So you're going to get 
two guys that are basically going to chip and then they're going to be the check down options within this of course the running back will leak out as well but i want you guys to read this play and kind of think about what trevor lawrence is thinking so as this play begins this looks like some sort of cover one man-to-man -man defense right because these corners are ultimately pressing and it looks like they're running with these defenders so the quarterback now knows that the post is most likely not going to be there because this is a middle of the field close look which means that the crosser is going to be the guy he has to go to and within this play you see the crosser get open so that's a really really nice job by the quarterback to be able to recognize this play and ultimately he's going to be able to get the ball out now on this play you do get a blitzer coming off the edge and the safety marcus may and the quarterback does a nice job being able to get the ball out before the safety is ultimately able to kind of get home and a part of why the safety doesn't get there is because of the, of the tight end here that's going to leak late towards the left of the screen not only is he going to make contact with six that's enough time right there for lawrence to finish his drop and get the ball out so so really really nice job reading by trevor lawrence let's get into the next snap so you're gonna get a five yard run on this one the offense is gonna run split zone and this is a really really nice shot by the offensive line but i gotta give credit here to the center because without the center on this one the play does not work so based off of alignment these are the blocks that the tackle the guard and the center have but what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a run stunt here by the defensive tackle and the defensive end and the goal of that is to kind of throw the blocks off and number 94 would technically have blown this play up if you guys watch the center watch what the center does to number 94. we're going to play this in slow motion the center is going to block out and he's going to recognize that the stunt is happening here and he's going to pick up number 94. And he's going to stop 94 in his tracks. Now, what happens because he does that is the inside linebacker number 20 technically goes free. 20 is the guy that's going to make the play. But here's why I bring this play up. All right, this is a five-yard gain, so this is actually a positive gain. And the center actually makes the right call within this one to just let the inside linebacker go. Because from a depth perspective, if number 94 cleanly jumps this gap, he's more likely to make the play for a loss of yards or maybe a gain of one or two yards, as opposed to the inside linebacker, who is standing like four yards away from the line of scrimmage. So this is great processing by Fortner to basically take on the defensive end and let the inside linebacker go, right? You can let that guy make the play if the play picks up five yards. So I wanted to just point this play out because this is really good processing by him. Even the left tackle here does a really nice job handling the inside linebacker. He's going to end up getting to the inside of that inside linebacker. He's going to just push him out. Keep in mind, they are spilling on this play, but the running back does get a cutback lane on that one. So that's a nice job right there by the offensive line. Five yards just like that. So earlier, I showed you guys an end around, which was technically a pass to Agnew that picked up a number of yards. Here's something kind of similar, right? When you get these guys in motion, this is what happens to the defense. This play is going to pick up 17 yards by the running back. And this is the touchdown run by ETN. A really, really nice job, if you guys ask me. Because what Jacksonville does on this one is, first and foremost, they're going to motion number 13 to the right. And look at the linebackers and the safeties all swap run fits. You're going to go over here from the left, and you're going to go over to the right. The run fits are changing within this play. At the same time, what's going to end up happening is you're going to put Kirk once again in motion the opposite way. So what happens then is the run fits switch back. Now everybody is kind of confused because the ball gets snapped at the same time. You're putting the safety here in a very tough situation because not only did his run fit change, not only does his defensive end here, number 92, now have a completely different job. It's just confusion, right? And this is what motion can do pre-snap. And this is a very, very nice job, in my opinion, by the, by the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive coach to really design these type of plays. Because on this one, the offensive line literally did nothing in terms of helping this play, right? This play just ended up being the motion really did everything. The offensive line just kind of sold it that, hey, this is a run to the left. And that kind of sucks in guys that way. Just enough, right? And you can see that ultimately the play picks up the touchdown. Now, to me, this is such a beautifully designed play. And this is part of why the Jaguars are such an explosive offense. This is part of why I think this is arguably a top two or three team in the NFL right now. Check this play out. The defense is lined up in a light box. And what that means is they're going to keep two safeties deep. And the reason why they're doing that is because you have three guys bunched up to one side of the field. And the defense believes this is going to be a pass. 
And although this does technically count as a pass, you're going to get a quick screen over here to ETN towards the left of the formation. And this is technically just an extension of the run. But this play is very thoroughly thought about. And the execution is perfect. You know, sometimes when you run these quick screens over here, these guys get confused, but that doesn't happen on this one. You're going to see the first wide receiver here take the furthest guy out, which is going to be 23 who's going to set the edge. And then from there, you'll see the other two guys pick off the next two defenders that kind of show. So to me, this is a really, really nice shot by these guys to really understand what it is they have to do within this play. You see right away, the receiver lined up on the line of scrimmage is going to take the cornerback to the outside. The two guys to the inside are going to basically pick off the inside linebacker and the safety. And this is just designed perfectly, in my opinion. And you picked up seven yards on this one. It's a very, very nice play, if you guys ask me. You got a third and six. And most of the time, this is a passing situation, especially on your side of the field. But they're going to once again attack a defensive end who's a lot stronger, a lot more physical, maybe not as quick. This one doesn't technically pick up the first down. And we'll talk about why it doesn't pick the first down up. But this is a nice design. Third and six, you needed six yards. You picked up five and a half. You know, the ball just didn't get spotted, in my opinion, to favor the Jaguars on this one. But I like the design. I like the concept. I like attacking a specific guy that you may feel that may not be as quick or as fast. You know, one of the things that Jacksonville's done is they've created this explosive offense. They've gotten these playmakers, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley. They put these guys together, and these are kind of the results that you would get, right? So to me, the one guy that ends up making the play here is going to be 53, and the left tackle should have cut him off. Now, the left tackle in this one is not able to fully get there. Had he gotten to number 53, I think ETN picks the first down up, and you can see that Jordan, the defensive end, is just not fast enough to kind of get out there, right? ETN has the first down on this one. Had this second linebacker not came in, right? You can see that Jordan's not quick enough to really shut it down. And ETN actually picks up most of the yards that were needed. Even if Jordan, as you guys will see here, does kind of get there. He does kind of get to ETN, but he doesn't ultimately make the play, right? To me, it's the inside linebacker, the weak side linebacker specifically, that does not get cut off. And to me, this is still a nicely designed play, right? I still would give this play credit, the design, the thought process behind it. Just because it didn't work doesn't mean that this was not a good call by the offensive coach. So earlier, there was a split zone concept in which these guys block the way they block here. And the tight end wham blocked on the, on the backside defensive end. On this one, they're going to make it look like it's once again a split zone. Keep an eye on the tight end on this one. The tight end, once again, is going to go towards his defensive end as he's almost going to block him. But instead, the tight end hitting the defensive end here, they're actually going to run this outside. And this is a great counter off of the split zone. So it's a really nice job. You're really putting that defensive end in a, in a tough spot. This play right here picked up 11 yards. And it's interesting as hell if you guys really think about it. Because earlier they picked up 5 yards off the split zone. And the defensive end really wants to stop this tight end. He doesn't want to get cut, right? And ultimately, the tight end is going to turn this around the defensive end. Lead block for the running back. Kick, kick out the cornerback. And just like that, you pick up 11 yards. It's a really, really nice job right here by the offensive coach. So this is the final play right here that we're going to analyze. You got a 44-yard play by Christian Kirk. To me, this is such a nice job. And I think the Jaguars are once again going to do a really, really nice job attacking something specific. And what they're going to attack on this one is they're going to attack a veteran who is no longer as quick as he once was. That is Tyron Matthew. The Jags are going to run Christian Kirk on a fake whip back to the inside. And you just don't see these type of routes. Kirk here does a really nice shot, faking this to the outside, ultimately coming back to the inside. And that's just a very, very difficult thing to stop for a guy that's not that quick anymore. Tyron Matthew is no longer the same safety he once was. And for the Saints to put him into man coverage against Christian Kirk, Kirk just runs right by him and he picks up 44 yards, which would ultimately be the game winning touchdown for the Jags. To me, really, really nice shot attacking once again, something specific really going after it and, and trying to take advantage of mismatches. And to me, it's just a really, really nice job by the offensive line, the execution, just a great overall rep. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are going to be covering the Jacksonville Jaguars on this channel. And we're definitely going to do some O-line, D-line, linebacker content. One of the guys that I've been looking into possibly doing a film breakdown next is Trayvon Walker or Devin Lloyd, two guys that I really, really like. There's a lot of flashes on tape. 
by both of those guys, I know it hasn't fully been realized yet, but to me, this Jags team has really built themselves the correct way. And they have arguably one of the better right tackles in the NFL and Anton Harrison, in my opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And I will see you guys next time with another video.